this is such a huge uh, conflict of interest if it proves to be true that Canadians and Quebecers cannot go on with this prime minister as the chief of state of Canada. Calls for the prime minister to step down tonight from the leader of the Bloc Québécois. This as controversy surrounding Justin Trudeau's ties to the WE charity continues to grow. We now know that several members of the Trudeau family were in fact paid to speak at some of the charity's events. So what are the political consequences for the government? It's Thursday, so we called back at issue for a second night in a row. We're going to do our viewer questions, but we'll put that off until next week because of this story. Chantal Hébert is in Montreal. Althea Raj is in Ottawa. We'll catch up with Andrew when we can. Uh, all right, let, let's just start with the news, uh, Chantal. How significant is this? Just a reminder to people, as I'm sure they saw in Catherine Cullen's story, that there was a large contract going to WE to help the government administer this student grant volunteer program. Program. The, the, the contract has been severed, but in the meantime, this has now come to light today. Yes, and is, how much of a surprise could it be? Almost everything that has happened from that announcement on was almost written and predict, uh, easily to be predicted on the day when it happened. But to add to that, uh, today's news only makes something that stank. Uh, stink a lot more. I believe it's a, a self-inflicted wound. It's a serious uh, story. And it goes to the issue that the opposition parties will uh, focus on, which is the judgment of the prime minister, mm -hmm. because this is uh, a controversy that is tied directly to himself. Yeah, I mean, so so the ethics commissioner didn't even wait for this latest piece of information to become public to to decide that he was launching an investigation into potential conflict of interest between the prime minister here. The prime minister said in a press conference this week, Althea, that he didn't recuse himself from the cabinet table when the contract decision was made, uh, and and now we find out that his mother, his brother, and on one occasion before he was prime minister, his wife all got money from this charity. Yeah, I mean, it stank before we got this kind of uh, bombshell story uh, today. Last Friday, I think the story was bad enough. Um, you don't, if you read the Conflict of Interest Act, you don't actually need to have uh, one of your family members, for example, get a financial benefit. A benefit can be in a promotional benefit, for, for example. So if you think while Trudeau has a podcast and her, her brand, if you want to call it that, might be uh, heightened by the fact that she's given more exposure through the WE uh, organization. Mm -hmm. um, so he's basically... Uh, being investigated for breaking the conflict, of, being in a conflict of interest, uh, showing preferential treatment to an organization that he has ties with. I mean, I think the question that everybody is asking themselves is, you know, how could the prime minister's office have allowed this to go through? I mean, there are so many details surrounding this contract that doesn't even make sense. This organization is for young people. It's now it's administrating uh, volunteer opportunities for post-secondary students. Like that doesn't really make sense. Um, the questions about the fact that we was administrating the contract, but also it was offering paid government paid volunteer position with its own organization. Well, that seems a little shady. Uh, the fact that it was paying teachers $12,000 to uh, recruit yeah. dozens and dozens of students to join this organization. Also, some people had problems with that. And now we, we learned that the financial ties are even more um, obvious than uh, perhaps many people suspected. I mean, you, you, you could, you know, you could, if you were the government, try to dissociate yourself from all those things that Althea just r rhymed off there, Chantal, because you could perhaps say that it was the organization and you didn't know. It, I think it becomes, no. it, well, but, but perhaps, right? But I think uh, it becomes maybe. very, maybe, but it becomes very difficult <laughs> for a government to say, I didn't know my mom was making money from the organization. Like, I, I don't know how that would not have come up at any point. Uh, Two points. If yeah. no one in the PMO raised his or her hand to say this is not a great idea because optics to start with are not so good. And even if you really want to do this, we need to do due diligence. And if that didn't happen, then Justin Trudeau needs to change his palace guard because they're not watching his back. If someone did raise his or her hand 
and was ignored, and only one person can ignore that advice, and that would be the prime minister, then the prime minister needs to look at himself in the mirror and wonder whether his judgment, uh, once again, in this case, has failed him. Because anyone who is competent would have said, this, the optics of this will be difficult. Should we not do due diligence? Not so hard to do, apparently. Yeah, Althea, go ahead. No, I 100% agree with Chantal. I, the, the fact that he would not recuse himself from this decision, well, first of all, they suggested that this, uh, the WE charity was identified by the public service, which is, um, raises a lot of questions to begin with. It's very unusual. Even If this is the case, let's suspend disbelief. If this is the case, usually the public service comes to you with a few options, not one option. And rarely would the public service say, hey, we don't have the capacity to do this. We think you should go with another group. Even let's say we believe that that happened. The fact that the prime minister, who knows that he, his mother, his wife, his brother, uh, have ties to this organization, financial or otherwise, the fact that he would not recuse himself from that cabinet decision, that is a question of judgment. And I want yes. to say, you know, in the in the last ethics report, the Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, SNC Lavalin uh, investigation. The PMO decided that they were going to uh, release cabinet confidences. They have set the bar. And so now the opposition, I expect, will be all over the government about whether or not that standard is going to be met. I mean, this is not the parallel case. I think the parallel yeah. case is the Aga Khan report. Yes. But uh, that bar has been set now. And, you know, what discussions were happening around cabinet? Will Canadians know more about this? because they have set that bar so high now. So, Chantal, this is the third now investigation, the third time uh, questions of judgment have been gone in front of the ethics commissioner. How potentially damaging is this? And after that, i got to go. I'm going to add to that the blackface uh, episode and say that they, uh, I'm, I don't think we're going to go in an election over this. A billion dollars was on the table. That's a hell of a lot of money, by the way. Uh, but I do believe it weakens uh, Justin Trudeau's leadership position from inside the Liberal Party at this point. Okay. Thank you both. I will, again, try not to call until August, but at this point, who knows what will happen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Before we go, be sure to subscribe to the Ad Issue podcast. Look for it on any major podcast app, our website, cbcnews.ca slash the national. And on that, I'll throw it back to Adrian in Toronto.